of our divine mother question what's the heart seeking a divine mother says the heart seeking it is the emotional being trying seeking means that the effective sender is trying to find out an emotional contact with the divine it is truly this says our divine mother with blessings says our divine mother Sonnets by our Lord Sri Aurobindo. Topic: First Spiritual Change. His mind and body's first spiritual change. A wide God knowledge poured down from above. A new world knowledge broadened from within. His daily thoughts looked up to the true. and one his commonness doing swell from an inner light awaken to the lines that nature hides attune to her moments that exceed our ken he grew one with a covert universe his grasp surprised her mightiest energy springs he spoke with the unknown guardians of the worlds forms he described a mortal eye seen on his wide eyes bodied viewless entities he saw the cosmic forces at their work and felt the occult impulse behind man's will Time's secrets swear to him an oft read book the records of the future and the past outline their excerpts on the etheric page one and harmonious by the maker's skill the human in him paced with the divine his acts betrayed not the interior flame this forged the greatness of his front to earth a genius heightened in his body cells that knew the meaning of his fate hedge works akin to the march of unaccomplished powers beyond life's arc in spirit's immensities apart he lived in his mind solitude a demigod shaping the lives of men our souls ambition lifted up the rays a power worked but none knew whence it came sure of him Mother's reply to Huta is indispensable for yoga. To try to cheat the divine is worse than to try to cheat a human being, and much more foolish. Words of our divine mother in a reply given to Huta. topic better to love a divine mother says human nature is such that when you concentrate on your body you fall ill when you concentrate on your heart and feelings you become unhappy when you concentrate on the mind you get bewildered there are two ways of getting out of this precarious condition one is very arduous it is a very severe and continuous tapasya it is the way of the strong who are predestined for it the other is to find something worth concentrating upon that 
that diverts your attention from your small personal self. Most commonly, people choose marriage because it is the most easily available. To love somebody and to love children makes you busy and compels you to forget a little your own self. But it is rarely successful because love is not a common thing. Our Divine Mother says, The best when you receive a shock is to answer at once by this thought, Let the peace of the Lord be with you, not in spoken words but clearly in your mind, and continue thinking of the Lord's peace and not of the unpleasant sensation. This is a good remedy and you will minimize the bad effects. When you think of the Lord's peace, it acts as a call and the more you think of it, the more you surrender yourself with it, which is the most powerful protection. It is true that life as it is, is not a very pretty one, but it is better to laugh at it than to be sorrowful. Next, words by our Lord Shirobindo. Topic, Feelings and Emotions our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, feeling themselves are of many kinds. The word feeling is often used as an emotion and they can be psychic or spiritual emotions which are numbered among yogic experience such as a wave of Shuddha Bhakti or the rising of love towards the divine. A feeling also means a perception of something felt, a perception in the vital or the psychic or in the essential substance of the consciousness. I find even often a mental perception when it is very vivid, described as a feeling. If you exclude all these feelings and kinder ones and say that they are feelings, not experiences, then there is a very little room left for experiences at all. Feeling and vision are the main forms of spiritual experience. What used to trouble you before was the vital mind which is different. For that is always occupied with emotions, passions, desires, reactions to all kinds of the contacts of life and the behavior of others. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says the physical mind also can be responsive to these things, but in a different way. Its nature is less that of desire than that of habitual activity, small common interests, pains and pleasures. If one tries to control or suppress it, it becomes more active. To deal with this mind, two things are necessary. First, not so much to try to control or fight with or suppress it as to stand back from it. One looks at it and sees what it is but refuses to follow its thoughts or run about among the objects it pursues, remaining at the back of the mind, quiet and separate. Second, to practice quietitude and concentration in this separateness until the habit of quiet takes hold of the physical mind and replaces the habit of these small activities. This of course takes time and can only come by practice, says our Lord Sri Aurobindo. Question by a child to our Divine Mother. Sweet Mother, how can one silence the mind, remain quiet and at the same time have an aspiration, an intensity or a widening? Because as soon as one aspires, isn't the mind that aspires? For this our Divine Mother says, no, aspiration as well as widening and intensity comes from the heart, the emotional center, the door of the psychic or rather the door leading to the psychic. The mind by its nature is curious and interested. It sees, it observes, it tries to understand and explain. And with all this activity, it disturbs the experience and diminishes its intensity and force. On the other hand, the more quiet and silent the mind is, the more can aspiration rise up from the depths of the heart in the fullness of its ardor. These are the words of our Lord Sri Aurobindo and our Divine Mother.